for, for that COVID talk. I believe we are now ready for the training program. 30 minutes before the end of the program, we are going to open the phone lines and we shall provide you with uh, the number that you need to, to dial. So all you need to do is to send us a missed call and we'll be able to call back so that we can receive your questions. Please also note that we are live on Facebook and uh, we also have a YouTube channel. To go to our Facebook page, please go to Fortune World Investments LTD. Fortune World Investments LTD. Our YouTube channel is Fortune World Consultancy and Training. Fortune World Consultancy and Training. Well, the topic for today is business choice and registration. Business choice and registration. <clears throat> This topic will be divided into two parts. And dear learners, I would like you to take note and follow us very closely. The first part is business choice. And the second part is business registration. So the first part, which is business choice, will be facilitated by myself. And the second part, which is business registration, where now you actually, you where you'll be guided on how to formalize your business. The other part will be taken up by my colleague. So today's teaching style is that we are going to divide it into two. And uh, both parts are very, very important. Now, let us begin with uh, business choice. Making the correct business choice. When we say making the correct business choice, we are not talking about the business opportunities side. We are not talking about the actual business activities that you are involved in, such as maybe uh, selling fruits and vegetables that you buy from farmers, okay? Those are business ideas, okay? Maybe you have a barber shop. That is a type of business that you're doing. Maybe you have a salon. That is also another type of business. Maybe you are an artisan and you have a workshop where you make door frames, window frames, and so forth, you provide welding services. That is a certain type of business that you are involved in. But we are not really looking at that. We're not really uh, you know, going into detail with regards to perhaps you being a small scale farmer and you have a small garden where you have mixed uh, kinds of uh, fruits and vegetables, such as tomatoes and onions and other things. Okay? We are not really talking about those business opportunities. But when we say making the correct business choice, we are now referring to the legal status. Now I'll explain a bit by what we mean by legal status. By legal status, we are talking about the type of business registration, the type of business that you need to choose to register. Remember we said this topic is about, because we divided in two parts. There's the aspect of business choice. And the second part will be looking at business registration. So when we talk about business registration, there are different types that I will mention. And then my colleague will now come and take us through those business types and show us how to register them. 
So I'll be talking about what types of, of, of businesses there are, what kinds of legal status there are, and my colleague will come and talk about how to register them. So that is the, the, the way we're going to approach today's lesson. So for those who are following us on Facebook, please, if you have a comment, don't hesitate to send us a message. If you have a question, you can either send a message through that, or when we open the phone lines, do not hesitate to call or send us an SMS. But we want to say that in our introduction, an entrepreneur that is planning to start and register a business has basically four options that they need to choose from. They have four options, and I'll be able to talk about that now. Okay. Let's look at number A, business choice. The sole proprietorship. The sole proprietorship or the sole trader is the first kind of business or legal entity that an entrepreneur can choose from. This is a business that is owned by one person. The word sole, S-O-L-E, means one. It means an individual. So when you go to PACRA, the Patents okay, and Registration Agency, they will be able to help you to register this kind of business. Okay? This is a business where it is formal, but it has one owner. And there are advantages and disadvantages to each type of business that we are going to talk about today. Remember, we are in the segment where we are looking at business choice. You are choosing the kind of legal status. What are the advantages of a sole proprietorship? The advantage, advantage number one, is that all the profits belong to that one particular person. Now, I have seen a lot of sole traders right here in Solwezi, right here in Zambia, which have done very well. Okay, Some of them have been big and have been making good profits. So, so traders, some of them have, have had the opportunity to even employ hundreds of people. This business is registered as a sole trader, but because the owner has brought a team to work with him and is managing the business very well, some of these businesses have grown. They have opened bank accounts. They even have facilities such as internet banking. They even have facilities such as having a checkbook. But because it is a business that belongs to one person, that owner of that business has access to all the profits, number one. Secondly, they have all the, the signing rights. So they issue checks alone. They can sign a check without having a co-signatory if they want because that business is a sole trader. It is a sole proprietorship in terms of legal status. So we are saying advantage number one, dear learners, of a sole proprietorship or a sole trader is that all the profits are for one person. All the profits are controlled by one person. Okay, that person has, you know, a lot of power because they can make decisions alone. If they want, they will not even have a board to deliberate on how they want to invest into that business. They may not have a board. If they want, they cannot have a team that sits down 
to make major decisions of the company when it when it talks about how to utilize the profits for investment and reinvestment so this is the type of business a sole proprietorship the second advantage is that setup cost is relatively low and when we come to business registration my colleague is going to even give you the specific figures as to how much you need to set up a sole proprietorship with PACRA. So the setup cost is relatively low. And this business, this legal status, the legal status of this business is suitable for business startups. It is suitable for businesses like our target group for this, most of the targets of, of the members or most of the participants of this training program are small businesses that are just coming up with very low budgets. But you can afford to set up a sole proprietorship. So dear learners, everyone in this country has an opportunity to have their business formalized because at every class, at every level, we do have, you know, a business type that you can afford to pay for in order for it to be formalized. So we have said the first advantage is that all profits are for one person. Or that one person has the power to control all the profits and they have the power to decide how they are going to use it or invest it or reinvest it. Secondly, the setup cost is relatively low. The third advantage is that it is easier to start and to register a sole proprietorship. It is not complicated and you'll be taken through the process of how to go about registering this particular business. It is not difficult. It doesn't need a lot of paperwork. It doesn't need a lot of paperwork. The paperwork is relatively easy. It is relatively easy and you can manage whether you have you are very educated or not with a bit of guidance you, with, within a few minutes you are able to fill in the forms and apply for the, you know, uh, for you to have a certificate, a certificate of registration and you'll be given those details by my colleague. So it is very, very easy for you to register this business. The other advantage, I'll give you the fourth one, the last one, but there are more other advantages. But for the sake of learning, think that these four will be adequate. The fourth one is that there is one decision maker, as I've already said. One decision maker. How do you make decisions as a sole trader? For example, you are in the business of gardening. You are making good money from your cabbages. And then you decide that you are also going to introduce the poultry business you can make that decision yourself without having a complication of having other members of that business actually objecting. Okay, so you can decide whether to involve others or you can make the decision alone. But because it is a sole proprietorship, it is a sole trader, it belongs to one person, most of the time, there is one decision maker, the one who makes all the critical decisions. So you can decide to diversify that business to any other type of business that you want. You can decide to open another bank account and you begin to put some of the profits in a fixed deposit account. Okay. You can decide to employ two or three more people. It is very easy for you to make those decisions okay the other thing that you can decide is 
uh, perhaps how much you're going to be paying yourself. So those decisions are made by one person. Those are some of the advantages. Let's look at the disadvantages. I've seen my friend, Mr. Alex Sinjikinya. He says, following, good morning. Good morning, my friend. Welcome to the business development training program. Mr. Kamau and the team are following. Welcome, Mr. Kamau and team. And thank you so much for being consistent and for following the training program. What are the disadvantages of a sole proprietorship? Disadvantage number one is that the owner is personally liable. Now, what do we mean by liable? The word liable will simply mean that you are responsible for anything that may go wrong in the business. You become the cushion. You personally become liable for sorting out debts. You become liable for sorting out major challenges that the business may face. So, for instance, because you are the sole proprietor, that business and yourself are one person. Okay? Meaning that when there is a problem such as cash flow in the business, you are liable, you are responsible for raising those funds alone and making sure that you recapitalize the business. Okay? Meaning that if you were making decisions that are not very, very healthy for your business, for instance, if you were overspending because you were making good profits and now you have spent so much that you don't have enough money to recapitalize the business, you become liable to ensure that you solve that problem of sourcing finances and bringing it into the business. Okay. And secondly, the second disadvantage is that it is relatively difficult to obtain a loan. Sometimes when you go to the bank or to other financial institutions or other institutions that may give loans, they would like to know your legal status for the sake of security, for the sake of continuity, for the sake of checks and balances. And when they discover that you are the one decision maker, sometimes they feel insecure to invest their money in your business because you may decide to use it anyhow. So sometimes it is relatively difficult to obtain a loan. And therefore, as a sole trader, what you need to do is make sure that you put in some structures in your business. Yes. The overall decision of making critical decisions lies with you, but deliberately you can put in a system for checks and balances where you have others that you bring on board and they can have a say with regards to how you run the business, how you spend, how you do budgets, and that will make it easier for you to obtain financial assistance or loans. So when you have one decision maker, it may be a bit difficult to obtain a loan or other financing facilities. The third disadvantage is that there is likely to be no continuity when the owner dies or when the owner becomes old and capacitated, when they are not able to function anymore and they have been operating under the model of one decision maker, you are the only one who knows where you were getting certain goods, maybe from China. You are the only one who knows 
how to apply for certain goods online. You don't involve others because the major decisions are made by one person. When you have such a model, one of the disadvantages is that there is no continuity when that person is no longer able to run that business. That is the third disadvantage. There will be no continuity. We have seen, we can give many examples of certain businesses that we know. We have seen how those businesses have closed down, even if they were doing very well. When the owner dies, the business dies with him. So that is a disadvantage. The last disadvantage on this one is that the owner suffers alone. The owner of the business suffers alone. For example, when your business, which is a sole proprietorship, obtains a loan from the bank or obtains a loan from other people and you fail to pay back the loan, because you and the business are one, that is the kind of legal status that you have, sole proprietorship, you and the business are the same, they can come and pounds on your personal belongings. So if your business has failed to pay back a loan, maybe you uh, you obtained 50,000 kwacha to recapitalize your business, they can come and grab your house furniture. They can come and grab your personal to hold a vehicle which you bought and is under your name. Because you and the business are one person. Those are some of the disadvantages. Please take note, dear listeners, dear learners, we are saying there are advantages and disadvantages. If you apply the business development training knowledge well, even as a sole trader, you are bound to succeed. And there's also the option of once you begin to grow that business, you can upgrade it to other types of business registration as we are going to see along. I hope we are taking notes. If we have any questions, please keep the questions up to the time that we are going to open the phone lines. Let us go to the second type of business. The second type of business that you need to choose from, remember we are looking at business choice, choosing the correct type of legal status, choosing the correct type of business. The second type is partnership. This is a business with several partners. You may, be, you may have one partner, or even a, a few more partners. Again, like the first type of business, this business also has advantages and disadvantages. By the way, you will be shown by my colleague, when you are applying for a partnership, the method of application is the same with with the with the sole trader you apply through the same form the only difference is that where you put the name of the owners you can put more than one name but the certificate that will come out is the same for a partnership and the sole proprietorship okay so what are the advantages advantage number 1 is that earnings flow directly to partners. So these two or more people will have those earnings flowing directly to them and they can actually decide how they want to utilize that money. Okay. The second advantage is that that business will have the privilege of having different skills. When you partner, there are a few companies, a few businesses that we have been uh, grooming. 
you know, under the, the consensus sponsored mentorship program. We have a very strong mentorship program that sits under Kansanchi Foundation. And this mentorship program involves us going around every month, going to visit entrepreneurs that have gone through this program so that we can see whether the knowledge that they are applying, that they are getting from this training program is working for them and to what extent are they growing and there are a lot of success stories and some of these business people that we have found have gone into partnerships they have registered partnership types of businesses for instance one of them may be specialized in marketing and the other one can be an artisan we have seen such combinations before so one person designs what products they're going to uh, to produce. They make the products. The other person's job is to go around, you know, looking for orders for them to supply their goods and their products. So the second advantage is that when you have a partnership, you bring on board different skills that can help your business to grow and to run effectively. The third advantage of a partnership kind of business is that it is also relatively low to set up. There are relatively low setup costs. The amount that you pay for a sole proprietorship and the amount that you pay for a partnership is the same and you'll be given the particular figures by my colleague. The last advantage, of course, there are many more, but for the sake of the training, we believe that these are adequate. The last advantage is that there are shared risks between the partners or among the partners. If you are three, you will share the, ris the risks yourselves. For instance, I remember one in in the in the recent past i think that was about uh maybe uh that was about eight nine years ago under this same training program when we used to meet uh you know traditionally where we had classroom training we used to bring on board a lot of banks we brought on board that time not safe and we formed different groups we put, um, you know, our trainees, our training participants in different groups, and they were given loans. And the collateral or the security was the members of that particular group. And trust me, that scheme worked very well. They were no defaulters. Why? Because, number one, we trained them very well. And we showed them the responsibility, the importance of paying back loans. When you pay back your loan, you gain more credibility. And we had many groups and they received their loans. So some of them were put in groups of 10. Others would be put in groups of maybe five. And each member of that group acted as the watch guard of the other member of that group. So when the time for loan repayment comes, all the members would actually make sure that each and every one of them would actually make their contribution so that they can pay their loan installment. So meaning that they did share the risks. Now, in the event that out of five, one member decides to be dishonest and they don't want to remit their part, the other four will raise that money that they're supposed to pay as an installment and they will pay on behalf of that one member, then they will remain now dealing with that one particular member. That is how it operated. They shared the risk. And that is one of the advantages of a partnership. Dear learners, I hope that we are following and we are taking down these notes 
those of you that we want handouts, please feel free to contact us. If you are on social media, you have an email address or you have a WhatsApp line, we can send you a soft copy. If you don't have and you want a hard copy, please do not hesitate to contact our office assistant on that same number that you receive your messages. Phone her and ask her to print you a hard copy and she's going to gladly print you a hard copy. But you have to prove that you followed the training program. Let us now look at the disadvantages of a partnership. Disadvantage number one, just like it is for the sole proprietorship, is that there is unlimited liability. Meaning that the owners, the partners, whether they are two or three or ten, are directly liable to anything that may go wrong in the business. So they are liable for loans. They are liable for fundraising. They are liable for everything that happens in that particular business. The second disadvantage is that there is sometimes conflict of interest between the partners. So one partner may be of the idea that we are not ready yet to diversify. thousand quad and they are saying others are saying when we reach the target of fifty thousand quad let us open another branch of this business and others may be saying we are not yet ready let us reach two hundred thousand so there will be conflict of interest in terms of how you decide to use your money how you decide to direct your business in terms of diversification. There may be conflict of how much the business owners get paid. There may be conflict of interest in terms of major decisions like, do we employ one person or are we going to do the work ourselves? There will be that conflict of interest. That is the disadvantage. So when you are in partnership, you need to make sure that you sit down talk about issues very well, and make informed collective decisions together. The third disadvantage is that sometimes there may be mistrust among the partners. It has happened in the past. It happens even now. We have heard of how some partners misuse money especially when they are given the responsibility of maybe becoming the signatory or maybe becoming the person that is going to look after the finance department. Some of them have misused the money at the expense of the partners and it has caused problems in the business. So there is that aspect of dishonesty among some partners which may be a disadvantage if you have among yourselves somebody who is untrustworthy. There's always mistrust. So please, as you go into partnerships, you need to make sure that you bring on board, you know, partners that have integrity. Partners that can be trusted and partners that can actually help you you know, to, to, to grow the business in the right direction. The other disadvantage, which you may look at it as a disadvantage, which is shared profits. The profits are shared. It can be a disadvantage in the sense that perhaps the business is still small and uh, you have invested 10,000 kwacha and your profit is 3,000 kwacha 
and those profits have to be shared among the three owners or the three partners. That can be a disadvantage. But at the same time, when the business grows, because you have brought in different skills and the business is making much more profits, that disadvantage can be turned around into, a, into an advantage. Okay, so share profits can be a disadvantage. And the last but not the least disadvantage under the partnership type of business is that sometimes you may face delayed decision-making processes because you have different views, you have different opinions, you are four of you, one partner is saying, let us change our supplier of these goods that we stock in the shop. The other one likes the, other, the, the original supplier and they're saying, no, we have been with the supplier for a long time, let's maintain him. You can have delayed decision making in terms of how much money you need to reinvest. Others may be of the view that we need to borrow from the bank in order for us to capitalize our business. Others may be saying borrowing from the bank will disadvantage us as a small business because the, the interest rates are too high at the moment and we may end up you know, swallowing our profits in loan repayments. So there'll be you know, a delay in terms of coming up with certain decisions. But again, when you have healthy conversations, you will still come up with informed decisions that you can have collectively and you can make those uh, business decisions that can help to grow your business. So dear learners, we have looked at the second type of, uh, of, of business that you need to choose from, which is the partnership. Let's look at the third. The third one is called the limited company. So under the limited company, you have two or more people that we call shareholders in a limited company. Now, these shareholders are the owners of this company. They are the owners of that business. They put startup capital into the business according to the number of shares they hold. Okay? And the major characteristics of a limited company are that this type of business has what we call perpetual existence. By perpetual existence, we mean this company that you have formed, you have formed another person. It is a person on its own. It exists on its own as this company that you have formed. It has perpetual existence. Okay? So that company's registration is perpetual. It has limited liability and it is incorporated at registration. Okay? So, for example, an entrepreneur uh, to register a limited company may need to seek the assistance of a legal expert or a consultant. Now, let me let me just explain a little bit, you know, about this type of uh, company. We said it has perpetual existence and limited liability. What do we mean by limited liability? The liability of the shareholders is limited in the sense that because this company that has been formed is another person, the liability of that company is in that third person that they are formed. Okay? So, in other words, the owners or the shareholders of this type of business are not completely liable towards certain things that 
this company may need to shield them from. For example, Fortune World Investments Limited is a limited company with limited liabilities. And all the shareholders of that company are protected from certain uh, liabilities or obligations. Of course, we run the company. Of course, we are responsible for making sure that that business grows. We are responsible for ensuring that we pay our obligations, we pay tax and everything. We are responsible. However, when this company acquires assets, like for instance, the vehicle I use at the moment is registered under Fortune World Investments Limited. It belongs to that third person that we have formed. It does not belong to me as one of the directors. So if I owe someone money in my individual capacity, they cannot come and repossess that vehicle. They can only repossess that vehicle if the loan was given to the company. I'm, I hope we are following each other, uh, dear listeners. So when me as an individual, Mukumbi Kafuta, owes money, I owe Mr. Peter some money, they cannot come and grab any property that belongs to the company. Why? Because it is we have limited liability. I hope we are following, dear learners. So company, the, the individuals are protected, okay, by the company. So the company is liable for everything for all the obligations that the company has to face. That is how a limited company operates. Again, there are advantages and disadvantages of a limited company. What are the advantages? Number one, it is easier to finance through shares. It is easier to finance through shares. My colleague will be able to explain to you the share structure, okay? And I hope that it will be very helpful. But please note that it is much easier to finance through shares because when different shareholders come together, they can all make a contribution and they can raise startup capital. The second advantage is that it has greater status and credibility. It is much more trustworthy with stakeholders like other companies and the government. It has greater status because it is a limited company and most big companies are limited companies and some of them are registered as uh, you know, private limited companies okay others are registered as public limited companies my colleague will be able to come and shed some more light okay so when you see the word plc for instance kansanshi mining plc plc stands for public limited company meaning that they have floated shares to the general public and the general public have been able to buy some shares into that company. Fortune World is a private company, so meaning that we have we have not yet uh, opened it up to the public where they can buy shares. So if we need to bring in someone on board, we have to bring him on board as in, in our private capacity where we just add them at Pakra to say this one has become a shareholder as well. So there's greater status and credibility. Okay, why? Because of the transparency that such a company brings about. They, uh, it brings about a lot of credibility because there are checks and balances. 
The third advantage is that shareholders are not personally liable, as I was already explaining. So the shareholders are not personally liable to anything that belongs to the company or any obligation of the company. But of course, they are responsible to ensure that that third person that they have created is doing well. What are some of the disadvantages? Disadvantage number one is that cost and complexity of legal requirements. Okay, so there are a lot of other costs that accompany this kind of, uh, of company. It is a bit more costly to, to register and there are a lot of other things that you need to put in place in order for this company to become operational. Secondly, profits are shared. Of course, uh, that can be a disadvantage, especially if the company is still small, but it's a limited company. And uh, uh, so the, the, those, those profits have to be shared among many shareholders. But when the company grows very well, that also can be turned around to become an advantage because the more you put in together, the more money you'll be able to generate and you'll be able to share the bigger side of the profits. The third and last one, but not the least, among the advantages, among the disadvantages, I beg your pardon, is that business, the business pays tax on turnover or on profits and shareholders pay tax on dividends. Now, it may be a disadvantage from the side of the shareholder because they are they feel like they are losing when they are paying tax. But let me mention that it is also important to pay tax. It is important because when you don't pay tax, it means that you are not contributing towards the social welfare of the country. It means that you are not contributing to pay yeah, you, you know, to, uh, to pay government workers, you're not contributing towards buying medicines in hospitals and so forth. So paying tax is both advantageous to the system because you are contributing to the national coffers. But for the business side, it may be a disadvantage because you are, you are losing out in terms of um, the amount of money that you are paying out and the shareholders will have less money to to actually utilize for themselves. I hope we are following, dear learners. I hope we are following each other. We have looked at the limited company. Let's look at the last type that we're going to consider today, which is the cooperative. A cooperative is a voluntary association of a group of people who decide to work together for a common goal or purpose. And this cooperative often has a democratic form of governance where members own and control it. There is equitable distribution of earnings in a cooperative. I'm sure most of us, small business people, small scale farmers are in cooperatives. And you may agree with me that it is a voluntary association that operates with members. So cooperatives are formed for economic gain for marketing and other strategic reasons such as cost sharing. So in a cooperative, all the members have one vote each in the decision-making process. And usually a management committee is elected to oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the cooperative. So one thing to note is that a cooperative is a business entity. That's why government have been, has been saying Form cooperatives, form cooperatives, form cooperatives. Position yourselves to participate from CDF. A cooperative is such a model. It's a business entity. It is not just for the collection of free inputs, but the cooperative is a business model. The advantages are as follows for a cooperative. It has favorable taxation. So the taxation that you pay as a cooperative is quite quite minimal, it's quite favorable. Secondly, there is limited liability. Once again, there is always that protection of the, uh, the, the shareholders. Thirdly, the cost of registration is also quite low. And fourthly, 
there is shared there are shared losses and risks among the members some of the disadvantages of the cooperative are that cooperatives are said to have a poor performance record most of the cooperatives that we have in zambia have not performed very well and government is encouraging cooperatives to change their operation models and begin to operate as businesses so we don't need to have a cooperative which hibernates when they collect fertilizer then they go to sleep and then they resurrect again in september a cooperative should be doing business like any other business so cooperatives are said to have a poor performance record the second disadvantage is that decision making is rather slow why because you have got many members and you have to talk about things and agree before you make the decision the last disadvantage is that the procedure for its formation and registration is rather slow so those are the four uh, the the advantages and disadvantages so each of these four forms of business have their own advantages and disadvantages as you have seen it is therefore it therefore means that before one chooses any of these forms of business there is need to get detailed information of each and choose the one which provides the best option given okay um with regards to the objectives that you want to achieve now very soon my colleague will be coming in but let me just mention that there are other criteria for choosing a business when you want to choose between okay the the types of business that you want to do or you want to register and the type of business that you want to engage in whether you want to go into construction whether you want to form an uh, electrical engineering company, whether you want to form a processing company of, uh, you know, you will be processing foodstuffs, you know, you need to, to note the following. Appropriate answers to questions such as the ones that I'm going to, to show you are supposed to be given for you to make the right decision. Number one, quickly, I'll go through them. You need to ask yourself, how much money shall I need to start the business? How much money do we need to start this type of business that we are doing? Secondly, what will be the source of funding? Who is going to give us the money? Are we going to contribute as shareholders and partners? Are we going to get a loan? Are we going to get a grant? And so forth. Thirdly, what do I already know about this type of business? Before you embark on any business, dear learners, it is very important that you measure your skills. Go into a business where you have competencies in. Then you need to ask yourself, are service providers locally available for me? For example, get more information about the business or to register it. Okay, you need to, to find out that information. Will the human resource that is required be available locally? That is very, very important. We encourage people to go into farming, for instance. And uh, I know government is encouraging us to go into farming, diversification into agriculture. But when you ask a lot of SMEs, a lot of small-scale small farmers, the biggest challenge that we have is human resource. Because most, most people do not consider working for a farm as a job. So they, it's very, very difficult to find dedicated workforce. So will the human resource required for me to start this farming business, will it be available? Who are my competitors? Very important question because before you go into that business, you are supposed to study the, the environment of competition. What share of the market shall I have? Are the goods or services that I shall provide on demand? Or how shall I create demand? You ask yourself those questions because you cannot go into a business without doing a market survey. You need to know 
what goods and services the, the community needs. And then you can make that decision. Will the type of business be profitable? How sustainable will this business be? And what legal requirements shall I need to observe, etc., etc.? Well, dear learners, I believe that we have discussed quite a lot of things. So we have looked at choosing the business, business choice, what kind of legal status you need to choose. And we have also looked at the other criteria for choosing a business. Now, let's go to the segment where my colleague is now going to take you through, with, which is the actual process of business registration. And uh, I know that we have really moved, we have really uh, utilized a lot of time. So at uh, 9.49.45, we will open the phone line so that we can receive questions from you. Over Thank you so time. much. Um, welcome again, listeners. We have already chosen our business. We have been given the four types which we can choose from. Now, having chosen these, you will choose either to formalize that business or to continue as informal. We have also mentioned here that he Yes, as a startup, you can start as an informal, which means unregistered. These unregistered company, I mean, uh, businesses are also allowed. They can do their trading. Now, we shall look at, maybe let's just go straight and look at the advantages of being informal. What are the advantages of being an informal business? The advantages are that it is simple. You may or you may not need to keep records. You may keep records or you may not keep records because you are informal. Okay. And that all proceeds belong to you as the owner. Those are the only two advantages. But look at the disadvantages. One, you will not be able to get loans because the institutions who give loans will not trust you as an individual alone. If you will not be able to raise funds through loans, then growth also is limited. Yes, we have some uh, unregistered companies which have tried to grow, but that growth is limited. As an unregistered uh, company, you will not be able to get contracts. So, which means you will not be able to trade, to do trade with big enterprises. Now, what are the advantages of you being registered, your company being registered? The first one is that your business identity is legal. You are known. The government knows you as a company, meaning... You can do business with other big firms. You can also have contracts. You can even do business with government uh, institutions. I could give an example here. Say you are a farmer and you grow your cabbages and other crops. If you are not registered, you will not be able to supply to government institutions like uh, colleges and uh, other government uh, places. You will not be able to uh, supply to them. So meaning 
your market will be limited. So if you are registered, you will have that chance of trading with the big firms. The record keeping actually, which is required as a registered you know, company, will help you sustain your business and even grow. Okay, we have looked at those, uh, the advantages of being unregistered and being registered and their disadvantages thereof. Now, let's look at how you can register your business. We have the Patents and Companies Registration Agency, PACRA. This PACRA, they are found at NAPSA here in Solwezi. This agency is the one which is tasked, which is given the task of registering companies, businesses. They are the ones that register our companies. Now, we were given four options. We have a sole trader, we have a partnership, we have a limited company, we have a cooperative. Now let's look at how you can register these four. When you go to Pakra there, they deal in two types of registrations. They register business names that is one type. The second type is a limited company. That also is a type of registration. Now we start with our first one, which is a business name. This business name, when you go to register a business name, you can register a business name as a sole trader, you can also register a business name as a partnership. Even as a limited company, there is also a part of registering a business name there. Okay? Now, there are certain forms when you go to register your business name. We are going to look at the two first, the sole trader and the partnership. When you go to PACRA there, you will be required to fill in certain forms. You will be required to fill in forms. Then you will also be asked to pay a minimum fee. This minimum fee, it actually is broken into two. The first part is the business uh, name clearance. The business name clearance. You will pay an amount of 83 kwacha to PACRA so that they go through and search for a name that will be uh, appropriate to you. There, it means you will be asked to submit three types of names. You will actually have thought this before you went to PACRA. So you will come up with the names that you want to name your particular company. You will be able to choose three names. Then these names will be presented to PACRA. PACRA will ask you to pay the 83 kwacha. Then they will run these names in the computer to find out whether any of them is already registered. 
in the country that is because Bakra, when they run that they will be searching actually the whole country to find out whether such a name does exist already in the database so when they find that there is a name there which which is not registered already then that's the name that they will choose they will say okay now your company can register this kind of name then now they will ask you to pay another fee which is a registration fee this registration fee is 166 kwacha 166 kwacha for now the actual registration so when you add the two the name clearance and the registration uh, amount the total fee will be 249 kwacha so this is the amount that will be uh you will be asked to pay to pakra it will cover the certificate the seal and other administrative costs take note that you can do this uh, registration as a company a sole trader or as partnership so the amount for this is simply a 264 i mean 249 kwacha in addition to this if you are in a trading business you will also be required to register you go to the local authority so that you register for a trading license to be allowed to operate in that particular local authority for example in Solwezi. after you have registered with Pakra, they will give you a registration certificate which has got a very nice seal it's red in color but you will still not be able to do business especially the trading business in Solwezi, until you visit the local authority where you will be expected to apply and get a trading license when you have gotten this trading license you will be able now to do your business within Solwezi. note again here that with this Solwezi trading license you cannot go to Mwenilunga and trade using this same uh, trading license no but your PAKRA registration will still apply all over the country wherever you go with that PAKRA registration certificate you will be home and dry no problem but as you go out there to go and do some trading the local authority there who require you to register with them so that you have a trading license to allow you trade in Wenilunga. I hope that one is clear. The other thing is a business name may also be registered as a corporate. We are looking at it, a business name. This may also be registered as a corporate. This simply means an owned and a business name which is owned by an existing company can also carry out certain business activities of the company under the same name. So you may bring in other people to do business under the name of your business. Okay, that is the corporate uh, registration. 
I hope that one is clear. We heard that for the two sole trader and partnerships, liabilities are actually owner or owner's responsibility. Okay. So, sole trader and the partnership, you register as a business name. Then thereafter, you can go to the council to register for a trading license. I hope that one is clear. Now let's go to the second type of registration, which is done by PACRA. This is the limited company. This one, also you propose three names. And now for name clearance, in a limited company, which is limited by shares, you will be required to pay 90 kwacha. That is for name clearance. For registration, you will be required to pay a, hand, a, a thousand kwacha. So in total, for a privacy limited company, you will be, able, you will be required to pay 1,090 kwacha. To register. There are several forms that you need to fill in. I'm sure it was mentioned in the first topic that here as a limited company you will need or you may need to bring in legal minds to assist you or a consultant to assist you because it's a bit complicated. There are lots of things that are needed here. They have several forms that will need to be filled. There is a company's form two, which is the application of incorporation as a private company limited by shares. The other form is company form five, which is the declaration of consent to act as a director or secretary. Then you also have the company's form 11, which is the declaration of compliance. Okay, these are the forms. Now let's look at maybe directorship in this uh, regard. Directors, in the, there is a minimum of two directors and a maximum of 50 is uh, the directors. The share capital in a limited company, the minimum is 15,000, which is, which may not be, you, you may not be required to provide the proof of availability of this kind of money. But the share capital div is divided into units called shares. So this 15,000 is a minimum uh, share capital will be divided into shares which the shareholders will bring to the pool. They will bring in these shares to add up to the share capital. What you should know also is that this 15,000 is just a bare minimum. You may have a share capital which is higher and even at registration you'll find that your amount will be more than the 1090 depending on the amount of share capital that you have now let's look at these documents which you are going to fill in the articles of association this document states the name of the company, where the company's offices are situated, your objectives for which the company has been formed. You will look at how meetings will be held. How will you hold your meetings? Then you declare dividends. Okay and other information that may 
be necessary. These documents will be bound together with the forms number two, which I mentioned earlier, form number five and number 11. These will have to be bound together and submitted to PACRA. At least you need to come up with four copies so that eventually you remain with a copy yourselves. PACRA also has availed an on online standard article of association that may be downloaded for, from their website. This is the type, you know, the outline of the type of articles of association. So you can download these, then sit down and make sure now that you fill in your, uh, the, the, your required information. So that's why we say to set up this, you need somebody with a legal mind because much of the information here, even the, the, the wedding is legal. So a non-legal person like me, you may have difficulties to understand these forms. So you need somebody to consult. Okay. So those are the, uh, the two, the limited company and the, those two, partnership and sole trader. Now let's come to a cooperative. A cooperative, just as we have heard, is where a group of people come together, right? With the, you know, one objective of actually doing business. This also must be registered. However, you will not register this with PACRA. Instead, you will go to the registrar of cooperatives. Here in Solwezi, we have our officer who is sitting at Dako's office there, although he is supposed to be at PACRA where the PACRA offices are. But because of lack of office space, I'm sure, that's why he's sitting at Dako's office. Now for a cooperative to be registered, you need the following. You need an NRCs, copies of NRCs of all the members and the list of their names. Then you need to come up with bylaws which will guide actually the, the process of doing business as a cooperative. This document, you know, a, 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 an outline of the same can also be downloaded or gotten from the, 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 the cooperative officer. Then you go now and sit down and put in your details and how you feel your cooperative will work. Doing this is actually a specialty. You know, it's not easy. You can't just go on a computer and start doing this. You need maybe people to help you. So here you have to put aside at least some monies up to maybe 500 kwacha. Otherwise, it may cost even less for you to do the bylaws. Okay, you need an expert also to help you through there. But the registration fee for a cooperative is only 10 kwacha. 10 kwacha, that blue, you know, a note. That is only what they will require of you. So I don't see reasons why, you know, people will fail to form cooperatives. You know that the government is calling for us to form cooperatives and they have made it cheaper and easier to do what to form because you only pay 10 kwacha and these, it's almost a hundred kwacha 
110 kwacha will be done. Okay? So long you come together, set your objectives, make sure that uh, the members are also listed. That is the cooperative. So, unless you have questions on this,
what you are going to, to you you are supposed to pay is turnover tax which is a tax on your profits but now if you have not made any profits you will not be required to pay anything and there is a threshold which is given by ZRA if you are unable to reach that threshold then you can only submit what we call new returns every month if you haven't made any profit or you haven't even done any business you submit new returns to ZRA. ZRA will actually respond to you after you have submitted these new returns they will tell you that we have received your new returns and we have approved them okay they will not uh, squeeze water from a rock no so if you have not made profit as a small business person uh, the taxpayers and taxi people will not squeeze tax out of you but you have to report to them that you are in existence and you have not uh, made any profit i hope that one answers your question pakra yes pakra are supposed to go around once in a while just to check these business entities which are registered with them whether they are in existence or not that's why in the forms that you you fill in at pakra there is even a, a diagram that you are supposed to draw showing where you are located this is the diagram that they will use to trace you you know it's like a map which you are going to show that okay me i stay in kazomba kazomba it's at this point you will draw a sketch and that is the sketch which will help pakra officers to locate you and find out whether you are in existence or you are doing the right thing or not okay so i hope i have answered you sir wonderful thank you. thank you very much for that question we still have nine minutes to take some more questions the number to dial is 0978-383-141 0978-383-141 there is a message from mr alex Sijikinya. His question is that to put a sign post. Okay, there is a caller there. And I'm going to call them back. It appears as if this is uh, just another call because they're supposed to page. Okay, I hope that this is one of the, the participants. Uh, let me just call them back because we are not supposed to use your talk time. We are supposed to foot the bill. Good morning, your name and where you're calling us from. This is Fano Chansa, calling from college area. Yes, Mr. Chansa, how are you? Fine, thank you. Please, your question. Uh, my question is over the so concerning the so trader. Yes. If I'm registered as a so trader, for example, in transportation or construction, mm. what the chances do I stand to get a contract in bigger companies like mine? Do I stand the same chances with big uh, limited companies or public limited companies? Okay. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Very good question. I'll, I'll endeavor to answer that one. Thank you. Mr. Fanuel Chancellor has asked a very, very important question. If you are registered as a sole trader and let's say you are in the business of transportation, 
do you stand the same chance of getting contracts with other companies, particularly those that are registered as limited companies or public limited companies? The answer to that one, Mr. Chancer, is uh, it depends on the way you are able to demonstrate your capabilities and abilities. You need to put in systems in your business. It may be a business name, but if you've got a, a well-structured uh, um, you know, business where you have you know, people that are competent, you have what it takes for you to compete with, with limited companies, then they will not look at your certificate, but they are going to look at your capabilities. They will look at your profile and they will, they will, they will look at whether you have, you have complied with the legal requirements that are required. So, for example, yes, you are talking about the transport business. When they send out a tender, a tender will always have certain attachments that you need to attach so that when they sit down now to select which company has won the tender, there is a, a process where they now start, you know, ticking in terms of compliance. And that is where they are able to select you or not select you. So they'll be looking at the issue of whether you have the required certification, whether your tax clearance, tax clearance certificate is valid. They'll look at the budget and everything else. So they will say, this one is compliant in this area. This one is not compliant. Until they reach maybe the top three, and then they will be able to select based on maybe who is closest with regards to the engineer's estimate for that particular contract. So it is possible, Mr. Chancer, that you can get a contract, a big contract as a business name, provided that you have met the criteria and you have demonstrated ability and capability. But then usually what happens is when you start off as a business name and you have opportunities to grow, you know, because you have been getting one or two orders and contracts, it is always advisable that you graduate your business and you make it into a limited company, which is going to have um, more credibility with the corporate world. I hope I have answered that question correctly, sir. Then the question from Mr. Alex Sinjikinya is that to put a signpost on my business name along the road, or in other words, to, to mount a billboard, is, this, is it the same charge with uh, writing my name on my shop? Um, to answer that one, Mr. Sinjikinya, is that the fees may be different, but you need to visit the municipal council in that particular town where you are. So like here, I know you're in Solwezi. You can visit the council and you can tell them to say, I want a quotation for a billboard. And the billboards will also come with sizes. And uh, so they'll be able to tell you for this size, it is so much. For this size, it is so much. And then they'll also be able to advise you with regard to how much you need to pay for you to write the, the name of your business on your shop. I hope that one has been answered. Dear learners, we still have four minutes before the close of the program. The number to dial is 0978 383 141. Please ask your questions and we will endeavor to answer those questions. We are in the dying minutes of the program. We can still squeeze in one or two questions quickly. But as you are, you know, thinking of dialing, um, let me just mention to say that let us be mindful of the different types of businesses that we can choose from. I think myself and my colleague have talked to you about the sole proprietorship. Take note that all of them are recognized by the government of Zambia. All of them. There is no segregation. And someone responded on uh, our Facebook page. I really appreciate for that comment. And he says, uh, according to, he quoted some articles. Let me read what, what he actually said. Uh, this message came from Mr. Joseph Musonda. 
and uh, okay there is a number that is diving i'll be able to read that comment in my closing remarks let me answer this call let me um, phone them back and then we can conclude Good morning, your name and where you're calling us from. Uh, this is the Ka Bernard Carota from Within the Radio. Yes, Mr. Carota, please, your question. Yes, please. Uh, I, I was unable to attend your full program. Okay. Yes, please. All right. I was somehow occupied with the one or two things. Okay, do you have a question, though? Okay, please, you can still ask your question. We are in the dying minutes now. Okay. Yes. But with you, I tried to reach back to, to reach Napsa. I found that the, the, re, the reason the package uh, was there, they have shifted to, to civic agenda. Yes. Yes. Now, there is this program, there is this country which, where, where uh, we need to address, when we have a quota business, we need to address with the, the what? I think they are getting a uh, trading license with the council. Yes. So how much does that one go? Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I'll be able to answer that one quickly. Okay. Okay. So if you want to get a trading license at the council, how much does it cost? It depends on the type of business that you are doing. They'll assess you. But the minimum amount that you can pay is around, uh, it can even go as low as 800 kwacha and it can go up to about, uh, about 5,000 kwacha somewhere there, depending on the type of business. So please get to the council. There is a form that you sign. They assess you. And for a sole trader, definitely it will be something that you can really afford. Okay. Dear listeners, the time is uh, 10 hours. There is uh, a message that came from Mr. Uh, is it, uh, Mr. Joseph Musonda. He says, informal businesses, okay, informal businesses are not legally legally encouraged as per section 4.1 and 2 of the registration of business names act number 16 of 2011 so that was a comment because uh what miss amsonda is encouraging is that we need to formalize our businesses of course we are still in an economy where we have so many informal businesses the marketeers the street vendors but when you start doing a well-structured business, what Mr. Msonda is actually advising us is that we need to operate legally. So therefore, let us register our business. Well, dear learners and dear listeners, thank you so much for everyone that participated in uh, today's uh, lesson. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for, for following us through. Thank you also for our viewers and listeners on Facebook. Uh, please let us continue to interact. If you missed out on any topic, please go to our Facebook page and you will get the full lesson. Okay, you can also go to our YouTube channel. You will get the full lesson. You can replay it and you can take notes. You can play it as many times as possible. The idea is for you to get this information so much in the mind. Okay, as for me, and from the rest of uh, the team from Fortune World Investments, I want once again to thank the sponsors of the training program, Kansanshi Mining PLC, for this support and for the encouragement and the sponsorship of the training program. Let me also thank Beats FM for giving us this opportunity to air the program live via the airwaves. And let me thank all of you, dear listeners, for following. Until next time. It is thank you, goodbye, and God bless you. Thank you. Ooh.
Mwani nefa, cheche pa cheche mwani. Tua sande, mwani kwa avuka. 